seconds go by. Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So for this frosting recipe, I'm going to be using vanilla, some regular granulated sugar, a can of organic coconut milk. I buy these in a six pack from Costco and you can see it has the kosher check certification on it right there. And I highly recommend this brand, it is very good. I am also using some pink Himalayan salt and some butter. If you are wanting to make this parv dairy-free vegan, you can use something like this. Whenever I want to make a parv frosting recipe, this is what I would use. And you can see it's OU certified right there. You want to make sure you have the ones with the, that are in a block, not the whipped version. And also some all-purpose flour. So the first thing I'm going to do is add my sugar to the pot. Important to note, I did have the recipe, so I'm only using half of each of the ingredients. I'm adding one cup of granulated sugar to my pot, followed by four tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I came across this recipe a while ago, and since then I've been using it for pretty much all my kids' birthdays. Uh, whenever I have to make a cake for them, this is the frosting I use. I love that it uses just basic ingredients that are always in my pantry, so. And yeah, sorry about the baby talking in the background. Next, you're gonna add the coconut milk. I'm adding one cup of coconut milk to my pot and giving that a good whisk to make sure there's no lumps. Turn your flame up to medium and then just let it cook for two to three minutes. As it's cooking, give it a whisk now and again to make sure that it's smooth and that there's no lumps forming. If you've ever made pudding or a roux, this is basically the same idea, cooking flour in liquid until it thickens. Continue cooking it on medium heat until it comes to a boil. You'll see it start to thicken as it boils and keep stirring it constantly at this point. You don't want it to get any lumps. And once it's thick, remove it from the heat and let it cool completely. Most recipes instruct you to transfer to a glass bowl and cover with plastic wrap. I didn't do this, but it worked out just fine. If you'd like your frosting to be white, then obviously you would skip the food coloring. But since I want it to be pink, I'm adding some food color at this point. The reason I'm doing it now and tinting the base is because when I made this recipe in the past and added food color to the final product after I've whipped in the butter, I found that it can cause like these little curdles, it can separate in the frosting, so I like to tint the roux instead. Next I'm going to whip the butter. It is important that your butter is at room temperature, so I always make sure to take it out of the fridge ahead of time. Whip the butter very, very well until it's light and fluffy. I'm using a hand mixer, but you can totally use a stand mixer with a whisk or paddle attachment. When the butter is light and fluffy, I'm going to add the roux one tablespoon at a time, whipping after each addition. Another reason I love this frosting recipe is because it's much less sweet. It uses less sugar than a lot of traditional buttercream recipes. I think it would probably even work to use an alternative sweetener like erythritol or xylitol or stevia monk fruit something like that to reduce the sugar even more, although I haven't had a chance to experiment with that myself yet. Once in a while for special occasions, I don't mind if my kids eat frosting with regular white sugar. Personally, I have never had much of a sweet tooth, and I remember even as a kid, if someone gave me a piece of cake that was from a bakery or store-bought, I would scrape off all the icing and eat only the cake. Clean the beaters and scrape down the sides of the bowl as necessary. You can see here how the color turned out. It is a bit of a guess when you're tinting the roux ahead of time. It's not as easy to control the final color, um, which is why I would recommend using a gel or a powder. And I will link some kosher ones in the description box below. For my purposes, I was looking to make it into this pale pink color and I was very happy with the result. This particular batch of frosting I was using to decorate my daughter's fairy wings cake. She recently turned six and this was the cake that I made for her. Mm -hmm. 